Hi, do you want to learn about ICD 10 CM 2022 official coding guidelines? Don't worry, I got you covered. This is Surya Johnson, your medical coding guide. Hi, in today's video, we'll see about the ICD 10 CM official guidelines for coding and reporting for the year 2022. So, what is ICD 10 CM? You all have the confusions, right? So ICD-10 CM is an acronym for International Classification of Diseases, 10th Revision, Clinical Modification. So by the explanation of the each words, you know, right? So International Classification of Disease, it is a classification of the diseases. The diseases are classified according to their organ system and everything is in two ICD-10 codes. And it is an international classification. And this is the 10th uh, revision. So it means there was already nine revisions before this. And this the 10th time it has been revised and clinical modification. So wherever there is a modification needed in this ICD-10 CM, the changes will be made accordingly. So this changes will reflect on October 1st of every year. So on October 1st of every year, there will be an updated version of the same, you know, 10th revision of the same ICD. The will not uh, totally change the ICD-10 CM, no, there will be like minute changes like an addition of the code like uh, because of this COVID, they added a new COVID codes, right? COVID diagnosis code, screening for COVID diagnosis like that based on the clinical development or a new diseases are found or some changes are required and they release it on every October. So these guidelines you know been approved by four organizations uh, that is that makes the cooperating parties with the ICD-10. They are the American Hospital Association AHA, the American Health Information Management Association AHIMA and CMS that is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and National Center for Health Statistics, NCHS. So these bodies, you know, they approve this classifications and, and then it is released. If you don't have an ICD-10 CM book, but you want to read these guidelines like anytime or anywhere, you can just Google ICD-10 CM guidelines 2022 and then the www.cms.gov. There will be a file, a PDF file about the uh, latest 2022 uh, April update of the ICD-10 CM guidelines. So why are these guidelines set? Why these ICD guidelines are there? You know, these ICD guidelines are a set of rules that have been developed to accompany and complement the official conventions and instructions provided within the ICD-10 CM itself. That is, these are rules like you have to follow and also along with the official conventions and instructions for each ICD uh, course, if you follow along with them, then you can land into the correct code. So these guidelines are organized into sections, uh, section one, section two, section three, and section four. In today's video, we'll see about section one only. So what are these sections? So section one explains about the conventions, general coding guidelines, and chapter specific guidelines. Then section two is about selection of principal diagnosis for non all patient settings. Section three will explain about the reporting additional diagnosis in non all patient settings. Section 4 is an outpatient coding and reporting. So all these four sections are like that, divided like this. The section 1, we'll see about the convention. Now we'll focus on section 1 only. Even in section 1, we'll be learning about the conventions only. Section 1 has uh, part A, part B and part C. We'll cover part A in today's video. That is conventions for the ICD-10 CM. It's a huge part and it might look like, uh, you know, not much important, but all these things, uh, if you are a fresher or if you are experienced like well-seasoned coder, you should be knowing all these things. So, you know, whenever there is a scenario comes up, you need not go and like uh, brush through the conventions, guidelines every time. But it's not bad that you're going back to the conventions, to the books or to the PDF and referring all those things but you should have an understanding before that. That will define you as the best coder. Knowing your basics makes you a perfect coder. So what are conventions? You know, conventions are general rules for use of the classifications, like the diseases are classified into ICD-10 CMs, right? So these are the general rules uh, to understand and define the classification. And then the second point is these are independent of the guidelines. So what does that mean? Independent of the guidelines means this will not modify or change itself 
when the according to the guidelines so this was always standalone these conventions this just uh, aid the guidelines but they do not you know depend on the guidelines and modify accordingly then these are the instruction notes so whenever you see any conventions in the icd 10 in the alphabetic or the tabular list you should focus on that because they give you some instruction like what you should look into and what and how you should understand that code the fourth one these take precedence over guidelines so this is above the guidelines but they do not alter the guidelines because they are independent of the guidelines but they just take precedence so they independently uh, you know explain what you should do in that case of scenario so under section 1 a convention we have around 19 type of conventions the first one is the alphabetic index and tabular list the number 2 is format and structure then use of codes for reporting purposes number 4 placeholder character number 5 seventh character number 6 abbreviations number 7 punctuation number 8 and number 14 talk about the same thing that is and use of and and number 9 other and unspecified codes number 10 includes notes number 11 inclusion terms number 12 excludes notes number 13 etiology or manifestation convention number 15 with number 16 c and c also number 17 code also not number 18 default codes and number 19 code assignment and clinical criteria so we'll talk about these all these 19 um, you know conventions in today's video so if you don't want to miss any of that please watch till end and as i always suggest take your notes grab your pen and always try to take notes so you'll understand and you'll not forget i don't want like go again brush up my notes it's not like that when you write something when while you're hearing it will get recorded in yourself that's how i believe and that's what i do and that's what i encourage you to do the first one here is the alphabetic index and the tabular list so what is alphabetic index it is a list of terms and their corresponding codes I'll show an example so then you can easily understand. So what is a tabular list? It is a structured list of codes divided into chapters based on body system or condition. So the alphabetic index is further divided into four types. The first one is the ICD-10 CM index to diseases and injuries. You know when you search the alphabetic index it will be similar to that of the dictionary so if you have seen dictionary books it will be arranged in the alphabetic order starting from a to z right the same pattern it will be arranged here like all the a type of diseases and injuries symptoms will be starting from a and then goes to b c like that so for example the patient is having uh, we can see a liver disease in that case where you will search you will search the disease so in the d section a b c d you will go to the d search for the disease and then in the same disease there will be a sub links and if you go to the uh, you know sub tabs in that there will be liver and next to that there will be the diagnosis code so in this way you can easily find out the diagnosis code from the alphabetic index the second one is the icd 10 cm external cause of injuries index so we will find all the external causes for example like if the patient had any uh, accident the patient is injured so the patient is coming to the facility so you want to code the accident also is an external cause of that injury right so you have to search the it will also be in the alphabetic uh, order you search the a series accident and how the accident happened like through a bus or a car like that you'll find out and there will be a um, uh, external cause icd10 codes so you can choose from that the third one is the icd10 cm table of neoplasm so there is a separate section a table for all the neoplasm also you can easily track it also will be in the alphabetic order only so you can just search like abdomen uh, neoplasm is it malignant benign uh, in situ all those things based on that there the diagnosis are tabulated so you can easily track and the fourth one is the icd10 cm table of drugs and chemicals so this is for the poisoning Uh, overdose and all those things are coming right so like the patient has a uh, a disease or something has happened to the patient because of a drug overdose so you can just check this drug and chemicals table and this will be in the alphabetic order as well 
and from A to Z you can check the uh, drug or the chemical name and then how what does happen like is it a poisoning or an uh, overdose is it like unintentional like that you can just choose based on the uh, tables next to that drugs or chemicals listed in the alphabetic order so these are the four parts of the alphabetic index being a medical coder you should know how to navigate the codes and you should know where to locate all these things like if you have a book with you right now you can just go through that so you'll get a good idea of what i'm talking about so the next one is the tabla list so this tabla list the same type of codes are in the alphabetic index but these are being divided and segregated based on the body system or conditions for example all digestive uh, related uh, diagnosis will be under the digestive system then uh, like all endocrine nutritional and metabolism related diseases diagnosis will be together in chapter 4 of the endocrine nutritional and metabolism disease and starts with a letter so based on this you can easily identify once you choose the code from the alphabetic index i always advise you to go to the tabla list check there so you not miss all the fifth digit or sixth digit seven digit characters that are needed and also you can like see some extra notes instructional notes excludes includes all those in the tabla list so do not finally conclude the diagnosis only by choosing from the alphabetic index no you should always double check it in the tabla list and choose the accurate codes so the second one here is the format and structure so all codes are formatted and structured so it's not like a random uh, codes they are segregated and all those codes and all those numbers are in right place they are formatted the format of the code will be like a categories subcategories and code so what is a category the category will be either a letter or number and it will be the first three characters. So the first three characters, it is called as categories. It can be either a letter or number. And then the subcategories, it is also like it can be in either letter or number. It is the fourth and fifth character of the code. The complete code can be either letter or number as well. And whenever the code is complete and further classification is not required, then it becomes a code. So even a category can become a code if there is no further classification beyond the three digit. A subcategory can become a code when there is a no more classification beyond the fourth or fifth digit. So a code can be a three digit, a four digit or five digit, six or seven digit character. Like for example, we'll see here injury of nerves and spinal cord of thorax. In this case, S24 is a category. S24.0 and S24.0X will be a subcategory. In this case, there is further divisions and the code finally ends with the seven digit codes S24.0XA. So in this case, S24.0XA will be the code. There is a complete uh, you know, classifications and there will be no more further classifications because seven digits is done. So S24.0XA is the uh, final code when there is no further classification required then it becomes a code in this example you see BAT it is for enterobiosis in this case there is no further classification of this enterobiosis this is the only enterobiosis in this case BAT becomes the code the category itself becomes codes the next example J20.6 it is acute bronchitis due to rhinovirus so fourth subcategory becomes a code then we have five digit j03.01 acute recurrent streptococcal tonsillitis so in this case this five subcategory will become a code six subcategories also will become a code like flail joint of right hip there is no seven sometimes there will be a code still seventh category so if it requires a seventh character then we should complete the classification and we should code the correct all the digits so that it will become the complete code so the next one is number three reporting purpose code so what does it mean so when you are going to report it should be a complete code it can be a three digit category or five or six digit subcategory or seven digit code code whatever it is it should be complete and there should not be further more classification it should be the final code whatever number it might be it should be the final code 
to report you cannot report in this case you see s24.0 you cannot report s24.0 as the final code because it is much further has a classification in this case it has s24.0 double x a so you, uh, if you're coding s24.0 as your final code it's a big no because you're not fulfilling the classification of the code in that case whatever is the final product will be the correct code so that should be used to report so the fourth convention is placeholder character placeholder is called x so what is x x means that part of the code like wherever it is there is not much classification for now but they have it there for the future expansion if they want to expand the terms and put some new features or new characters or new classifications or new words then they will remove this ex and they'll put some other numbers or alphabetic whatever it is so this part is for the future expansion uh, for example in t36.0x5 adverse effect of penicillin initial encounter you see there is an x after a zero it means so that x might be replaced in future might or might not be replaced in future by another number or an alphabet so you should not remove the placeholders and like you cannot make this code as t36.05a no that is wrong because all the numbers here like the 0 or the 5 and a have their own places and have their own meaning if you change the place it will lose their meaning and it will uh, you know ultimately result in uh, wrong coding and it is not allowed as well the next one in the convention is the seventh character so what is the seventh character we'll see like certain icd 10 cm have applicable seven characters uh, in the tabular list if the instruction notes mentions like seventh character needed then it should be you know applied then seventh character must be the seventh character in the data file like there's only five character uh, code the tabular list instructs you that it should have a seventh character of a or whatever it is then you should put the x as a placeholder on the sixth or fifth place and then you'll put this one as a seventh character so if it should fulfill uh, the need of a seventh character also it should be on the seventh character only like for example in concussion and edema of thoracic spinal cord the code s24.0 has an instruction symbol before that as seventh you can see that a blue color one written as seventh right so that it means that s24.0 should have a seventh character so in this case we'll bring the placeholders to play so we'll put s24.0 x x because there is no five and six so you should fill five and six as x x and then you'll bring the seventh character and bring it as a, a reportable complete code next we'll see about the abbreviations so what are abbreviations in the alphabetic index and tabular index so we'll say like in alphabetic index and tabular index the abbreviations are nec not elsewhere classifiable nos not otherwise specified both the uh, alphabetic and tabular has the same uh, acronym and the description so what is nec it is other specified and nos means unspecified so what is NEC? When a specific code is not available for a condition documented, for example, your doctor has documented that condition, but you cannot find a more specific code for that. There is no specific code for that. In that case, you will go to other specified. It is not classified and there is no code available in the book. In that context, you will be using other specified code of the same series. So NOS is the documentation is not specific. In this case, the documentation provided by the provider that is your doctor is not specific. It's very, you know, unspecified. In that case, you use the unspecified diagnosis. We'll see an example so you'll get an idea. If the doctor has documented a colostomy prolapse, there is no direct code for colostomy prolapse. In this case, you will choose other complication of colostomy like the doctor has documented but there is no for a classification of that direct diagnosis so you'll choose the same series like complication of colostomy other in that say another example the doctor has just mentioned 
cholestomy complication he has not mentioned what kind of complication he didn't specify it in detail in the documentation in that case you will choose unspecified like k94.00 cholestomy complication unspecified so this is how you can choose nec nos not otherwise specified or not elsewhere classifiable the next one in the convention are the punctuations so you see about the brackets so in tabular list what are the brackets mean these are synonyms alternative wordings explanatory phrases so in the alphabetic index these are manifestation codes so we'll see an example like for brackets in tabular list you'll see like this like superficial injury of face in the bracket it is given as any part so it can be any part of the face like the forehead chin cheeks uh, nose wherever it is like for example the patient came with a superficial injury on her cheeks you can code this code because the bracket shows any part of the face it gives so like we saw before it gives an uh, explanatory phrase in alphabetic index it is used for the manifestation codes so in this case of cystosomiasis we see so many brackets like for example for forearm b65.9 in the bracket there is m63.83 so m63.83 will be the manifestation code the next one the punctuation is the parenthesis the parenthesis in tabular list means these are supplementary words or otherwise known as non-essential modifiers they just provide some supplementary uh, meaning but they don't essentially modify they don't modify or alter the meaning of the words in the alphabetic index the same thing the parentheses are for supplementary words and non-essential modifiers the next one in the punctuation is the colon so in the tabla list we'll see a colon after an incomplete term for example you can see here abscess of brain is incomplete then there is amoebic so amoebic abscess of brain chromomycotic gonococcal tuberculosis tuberculum of meninges the eighth convention and 14th convention is the same as and in the coding icd book we uh, consider and as and or sometimes or the ninth part of the convention is other and unspecified codes we saw the description under the sixth uh, convention that is the abbreviation what is uh, other and what is unspecified we saw right the same thing applies here the tenth one is the includes notes so these includes notes come under the three character code title these notes can be an example or gives a definition of the code title so for example you can see like in this acute sinusitis j01 in this uh, below the three character code title there is an includes node so there is a definitions or some examples like acute sinusitis can include acute abscess of sinus even acute empyema of sinus means acute sinusitis acute infection of sinus is also means acute sinusitis like that it gives a parallel or definition or example uh, words in some doctors might uh, write like acute inflammation of the sinus or acute abscess of the sinus in that case this will give you a clear idea like that does also mean acute sinusitis so you can land into the correct code then we'll have the inclusion terms so these are list of terms under some codes so these terms gives you the synonyms or some various conditions of the other specified cases so we'll see for example b73.89 other diseases of spleen this gives you some terms below this like fibrosis of spleen perisplenitis splenitis so these all things also should be coded as other specified spleen so these are inclusion terms means like this code will also have these type of words like for example the doctors are uh, giving splenitis and in this scenario you can choose d73.89 even though the d73.89 shows like other diseases of spleen but this category of code includes all these terms that's what it means so the inclusion terms next we have the excludes nodes it means these excluded from each other are independent of each other so there are excludes nodes that means like the above code and then on the excludes uh, there will be a list of codes these codes are independent of each other so they want to differentiate because there will be always a conflict in certain types of code so they want to differentiate that these are independent of the other codes so there are two types of excludes excludes one and excludes two so what is excludes one 
एक्सक्लूज वन मीन्स प्योर एक्सक्लूज इट मीन्स अ कम्प्लीट एक्सक्लूड इट कैन नॉट बी कोड एट हेयर यू कैन नॉट कोड द अबाव कोड एंड द बिलो कोड दैट लिस्टेड इन द एक्सक्लूज वन यू कैन नॉट कोड हेयर दैट इज दिस कैन नेवर बी यूज एट द सेम टाइम दैट इज बिकॉज दे कैन नॉट अकर टूगेदर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन अक्वायर्ड कंडीशन एंड अ कंजेनेटल कंडीशन ऑफ द सेम थिंग कैन नॉट हैपन राइट so in this case if there is an excludes one nodes below and there are excludes one diagnosis you cannot code these two codes together they can they should never be used at the same time so the next one is the excludes two excludes two means these are not included here or are not part of the conditions but the patient can have or may have both at the same time and uh, it is accepted to code together if appropriate like in this case if the patient is having both the conditions for sure then it can code as appropriately for example we will see other instability of joint there are two excludes one and excludes two here under other instability of joint exclude one states instability of uh, joint secondary to old ligament injury and instability of joint secondary to removal of joint processes so in this scenario whatever is listed below the excludes one cannot be coded together with m25.3 because it cannot occur and it will not be present in the patient body at the same time so the excludes two here below the other instability of joint is the spinal instabilities so there might be chances or there may be occurrences where the patient is having both the instability of joint also the spinal instability and you can go ahead and code the other instability of joint and the spinal instability instability both at the same time if appropriate the next one in the convention is the 13th one etiology manifestation convention so what's etiology the etiology means the cause or the underlying conditions it is the basis like because of this only a disease or a condition has occurred like this is the major cause for other symptom or observable condition that has happened to the patient so manifestation means the symptoms or observable conditions which are seen as a result of some disease that is the etiology so manifestation comes after an etiology in the tabular list the etiology are sequent first or code first so it will be like uh, there will be a note also it should be sequenced first and they should be coded first the manifestation codes should not be coded first they should always be used as an additional codes or in the cis classified elsewhere codes sometimes this etiology and manifestation will be used for sequencing purposes only like there will not be any uh, relation we'll see an example of this under ulcer of esophagus there is a code first note so code first poisoning due to drug or toxin if applicable so there is an ulcer of esophagus because of some poisoning in that case you'll code first the t36 to 365 whatever is applicable in that series and then ulcer of esophagus also in the same thing you can see use additional code for the adverse effects so after you code like the t36 for the poisoning due to drug or toxin you'll code the ulcer of esophagus and for that there should be an additional code if applicable so if there is no applicability for the additional codes or uh, the code first like just the patient has an ulcer of esophagus in this case there is no poisoning or uh, there is no adverse effect in that case you need not code this uh, code first use additional you can directly go to the ulcer of esophagus code so the etiology and manifestation in the alphabet index will be both listed together etiology then in the bracket manifestation you do you remember the bracket scenario we spoke about the brackets will be used for manifestation so for example in the alphabetic index here dementia g31.83 has a manifestation code f02.80 so you'll code g31.83 and if applicable you'll code the bracket the manifestation code as well so this how it should be coded the next one in the convention is the word with it can also be uh, you know confirmed as in with or in it means associated with or due to so in the alphabetic index it comes under a main term or sub term for example here polymyositis below there is with myopathy it means polymyositis with myopathy it will lead to a different code polymyositis 
with a respiratory involvement it leads to another cord so the this with means the below code below codes or below description or diseases is associated with the main code like that in the tabular list it is just an instructional note the next one in the convention uh, are the c and c also so in alphabetic index if you see a word c s e e next to a code or any word or disease symptom you should definitely go and see it will show what or where you should go and see so for example if you search disorder it also show like c diseases then you can go you should go and see diseases to get the or locate the correct code the next word in the alphabetic index is c also so c also means there is another term may be reference like it is not necessary for you to go and see that but you can also go and see that it's c also but c word you should definitely go and see wherever it is uh, directing you to see the next one is the 17th in the convention is the code also so if it's code also it means two codes may be required to code this condition but the sequencing depends on the circumstance of the encounter if there is some code below it shows like code also then in cases if it is applicable you can code those two codes then we have the uh, 18th uh, convention default codes so in the alphabetic index it is next to the main term for example default appendicitis k37 so whenever there is an appendicitis you don't have to think is it a acute chronic pneumococcal or retrocecal whatever it is it is only k37 so it is the default code whatever classification the doctor is giving or the documentation uh, gives so many fancy names words etc but if it is appendicitis with so and so things it has only one code so it is called default code it will not confuse you that is the only code that will go and land into the next and the last one here is the 19th one code assignment and clinical criteria it is based on the provider statement it means like whatever the doctor might use or uh, a clinical criteria or whatever he may use to derive a code it is always based on the provider's word what he is telling is the final code it is not based on the clinical criteria so what does that mean it means like a diagnosis code is based on the provider's diagnostic statement that the condition exists if the doctor or the provider is telling you that this is the condition of the patient then that's it you should go and assign the code you should not like think uh, about on what clinical basis on what clinical criteria they use to establish this diagnosis no it's not or none of our business like you don't have to uh, you know verify the clinical criteria it is only the doctor's job to verify the clinical criteria and whatever the final uh, verdict or final diagnosis the doctor has given that should be the code assignment so you all have a clear picture of the section 1 part a conventions right we saw about 19 conventions this might look very meek uh, not much of importance to you but believe me i'm not telling you to focus much this is the basic this is the understanding part right so without knowing what and uh, where all those things are and uh, what these things mean you will be a coder but i'm not aiming you all to be a just coder i wish and i aim that all of you will be like super coders right hope you all got an idea about the icd 10 cm official coding guidelines section 1a convention and if you have any doubts or queries or any clarifications needed please feel free to put it in the comments section below so i'll try to answer all your queries maximum if you found this video to be useful please hit the like button that will really mean a lot to me and please share with all your friends especially your coding friends and if you're new to this channel and have not subscribed yet please subscribe and hit the notification icon so you'll not miss any of my future videos this is Surya Johnson your medical coding guide